It's just been revealed that the oil industry has been secretly fighting and lobbying against government support for any kind, and I mean literally any kind of clean technology, renewable energy or electric cars for more than 50 years. In other words, if you're curious and you're thinking, why is it taking so long for electric cars to actually take off? Well, there is your answer. Hello, my friends. Great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, hearing this, I'm sure you're not all that shocked, but The Guardian has revealed that even as vast subsidies, and we're talking hundreds of billions, maybe trillions of dollars have been given to fossil fuel industries, those same fossil fuel industries have fought against anything being given to, well, much better alternatives that are going to help us all. Oil and gas and fossil fuel industries, including car manufacturers like Toyota, of course, have lobbied lawmakers to block support for low carbon technology such as solar panels, electric cars and heat pumps as far back as the 1960s analysis shows. Trade Association in the US and Europe stymied green innovations under the guise of supporting a technology neutral approach. Where have you heard that before? Technology neutral. Who uses that phrase? We know exactly who uses that phrase, don't we? Toyota. Technology neutral approach to avoiding the damage done by burning their fuels. Now, fossil fuel, the fossil fuel industry, they have said that they're going to do all this stuff over the last five years in order to offset their carbon emissions. They've done almost none of it. The same incumbents were happy to lobby for government support when they were getting started and had continued to benefit from it since, said Dario Kenner, a visiting research fellow at the University of Sussex who trawled through decades of public statements from the American Petroleum Institute, API, and from Fuels Europe. So basically, you know, a lot of what we think is speculation. But what's happened is researchers have gone, they've looked at data from the last 50 years and they've proven what really has been going on. It's obviously hypocritical to call for technological neutrality when you are the dominant technology, he said. Kenner documented dozens of examples of the oil industry pressuring governments to hold back support for renewable energy, restrict funding for the de development of clean technologies, and weaken environmental rules that favored their uptake. Maybe you're curious. I mean, Toyota brought out a, a fully electric RAV4 all the way, way back in 2008. Why, why is it that they then decided we're not going to make it? Well, I think it's pretty clear. Lobbyists on both sides of the Atlantic argued that government subsidies for clean technologies distorted free markets. Activists say their position is dishonest because the oil industry benefits from tax credits and other financial help from governments and pays for only a fraction of the damage it, that its fuels and that burning its products does to people and the planet. In 2022, the total subsidies for fossil fuels, including costs to society, came to $760 billion US dollars. 760 billion US dollars in a single year in the US and 310 billion dollars in Europe. So the total was about 1.1 trillion dollars just in 2022 alone. And that's according to the International Monetary Fund, who don't really have a dog in the fight here. The revelations were outrageous, but frankly unsurprising, said Shira Stanton from the campaign group Beyond Fossil Fuels, who was not involved in the analysis. It has been proven that the fossil fuel industry caused the climate crisis and deliberately lied about it as they had the science. The fossil fuel industry have had the science about the climate crisis since the early 1960s. So finding out they knew renewable energy was such a threat to the industry that they had to lobby policymakers to rig the market against cleaner and cheaper technology to protect profits is just par for the course for the fossil fuel industry. Some interventions may have slowed the growth of technologies that scientists say are key to stopping the planet from um, heating up to the point where it's unlivable. 
1975, after a global oil crisis, the API imposed an energy saving bill that included refundable income tax credits for heat pumps in homes. The United States has a large resource base of conventional energy such as oil, gas, and coal, it said. Expeditious development of these supplies can make a significant, significant contribution, not only to improving US energy independence, but to creating a healthy economy. Some of the industry's early efforts to hold back competition later helped it argue that society could not do without it. A lot of people say that now. We can't do without fossil fuels. We can't do without internal combustion. Hmm. In 1997, the API protested against a bill to promote the development of electric cars. All the way back in 1967, that's when it actually started. So lobbying against EVs has been going on since 1967. They said governments should stimulate all efforts by industry to eliminate automotive pollution rather than dedicate federal funds to the promotion of any single possible solution. Yeah. Half a century later, in 2005, its lobbyists fought a bill to support electric cars with the argument that they were not developed enough and never would be. The United States and the world cannot afford to leave the age of oil before realistic alternatives are fully in place, said Red Cavani, the then president of the API. It is important to remember that man left the Stone Age not because he ran out of stones. and We will not leave the age of oil because we ran out of of oil. Fuels Europe, which has also fought against support for electric vehicles for more than 20 years, pushed to weaken EU fuel efficiency standards in 2017. So they would allow combustion engine cars burning fuel. Critics say the low carbon fuel with which it wants to power cars is expensive, inefficient, and in such short supply that they would be better used in planes and ships, which are harder to run on electricity. The oil industry had moved from denying climate change to derailing climate action, said Anna Krasinska, a vehicle analyst at the campaign group Transport and Environment, which was not involved in in the analysis either. The push for tech neutrality, particularly carbon neutral fuels for road transport, is a disingenuous attempt to keep combustion engines burning fossil fuels, she said. Some of the world's biggest oil companies have have invested in clean energy projects as they have come under increasing pressure from activists, investors, and governments. Armed with enormous wallets and skilled engineers, they've argued they can lead the transition to a carbon neutral economy. However, a report from the International Energy Agency, or the IEA, in November, found that oil and gas companies accounted for just 1% of clean energy investments. In other words, almost nothing. It described the sector as a marginal force at best in the transition. Kenner said it was ludicrous to debate an individual oil company's transition plans when the industry had spent so long fighting against clean alternatives that threatened its market share, that threatened its, its very existence, really. As part of trade associations and lobby groups, they have been deliberately trying to undermine the same technologies that people want them to invest in, he said. The IEA report found that oil and gas producers would have to spend 20 times more of the capital on clean energy rising from 2.5% in 2022 to 50% in 2030 to line up with the Paris Agreement goal of keeping the planet from heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Christina Figueres, a Costa Rican diplomat and architect of the agreement, told The Guardian before the COP28 climate summit in November that she used to believe the industry needed a seat at the table, but had lost hope after seeing it use windfall profits since the war in Ukraine to enrich shareholders instead of investing them in clean energy. And in fact, many of them are simply mining as much as they can right now. The API and Fuels Europe said that they were working to reduce emissions. The API said, America's natural gas and oil industry is working to address the risks of climate change and build a lower carbon future while simultaneously meeting the world's growing energy needs. Our members continue to make significant progress in reducing 
greenhouse gas emissions across their operations, while also leading in the development of low carbon solutions like carbon capture and storage in hydrogen that are critical to meeting the world's greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets. Fuels Europe said this, Fuels Europe can state that our industry is transforming and we have developed a comprehensive pathway of how we together with our partners can contribute to meeting the 2050 climate neutrality challenge. Yeah, well, the truth is that neither of these industries is in the least interested. It's all just talk. Kenna said the industry's lobbying is similar to gaslighting companies who fought the arrival of electric streetlights and canal companies who protested against new railways. By fighting off support for emerging competitors, the industry slowed the transition to new technologies. This is exactly what is going on in Australia. It's exactly why Tesla and Polestar have been forced to quit the Australian Automotive Industry Lobby Group because the lobby group is simply lobbying against electric cars. We know from the history of technological change that it's often the companies with the new technologies that push it forward. It's not usually going to be the incumbents, said Kenner. Blockbuster Video was not going to get to Netflix online streaming. In fact, it was offered the opportunity and it chose not to. Any similarities there between Tesla and Toyota's tie up? Initially, Toyota in fact owned a significant percentage of Tesla and then they um, decided we're not interested anymore. Thanks for watching.